A blue ocean and white sand makes for a picture-perfect vacation. But most vacationers don't realize how much work goes into keeping plastic trash off the beach. This work is mostly done by volunteers, hordes of them who come from all quarters of society. It's work supported by artificial intelligence, which can tell volunteers which beaches are the dirtiest. But the fact of the matter is, no matter how diligently they clean, the garbage keeps coming back, sometimes reappearing in a matter of days. Tonight, in our Sunday special report, we drop in on the people tackling the Sisyphean task of beach cleanups, and we ask them, just where is this garbage coming from? A sun-soaked beach can be the perfect place to relax. But today on this beach, it's a picture of hard work and industry. The wind is fierce, but that doesn't stop these impassioned volunteers as they clean the beach. Armed with metal tongs and garbage bags, they work to clear the beach of all unwanted debris. Restoring the beach's natural beauty is their goal. With organizers ranging from NGOs and schools to big corporations, beach cleanups like this are an increasingly common sight. The Environmental Protection Administration estimates that 200,000 people per year participate in beach cleanups in Taiwan. Even in 2020, during the pandemic, some 100,000 rolled up their sleeves to clean. But despite their efforts, garbage seems to reappear just moments after it's cleared away. You can't help but ask, where is all the garbage coming from? This is a landfill in Hualien County. The large white area in the middle of the image is a garbage pile, and right next to the landfill is the sea. When a strong wind blows in, the garbage that exposed can blow straight to the beach or the ocean. Basically, the garbage we produce every day, as well as the garbage collected by these cleanup teams, all gets transported to the landfill. It gets piled up in the open air before being sent to the incinerator. During the time it's piled up in the open, it's possible there will be certain variables that will cause it to scatter into the wider environment. After it scatters, it may end up in the sea. Bad weather can be a factor behind garbage on beaches, but the main factor is human activity. The United Nations has published data indicating that 80% of the marine waste comes from the land. For example, there might be people barbecuing on the beach. Their waste gets blown away and they can't be bothered to chase it down or are unable to. Or perhaps somewhere on the land, near rivers or other waterways, things fall into the water and get flushed out to sea. The other 20% happens at sea, including activity near the coast. For example, whether intentional or not, things sometimes fall into the water from boats. The source of marine waste is a complicated issue, and the question of where marine waste comes from has no clear-cut answer. Consequently, there is no way to fully eliminate the production of waste. For now, Taiwan can only rely on large groups of volunteers who continuously collect waste from its coastline. In 2020 alone, volunteers collected 42,000 bottles, 41,000 bottle caps, 17,000 cigarette butts, over 10,000 straws, and numerous plastic bags and utensils from Taiwan's coastline. In total, roughly 31,319 kilograms of waste were collected. A lot of work goes into these cleanups, even before they start. To choose a site, environmental groups have traditionally sent people to survey beaches to determine which ones are most in need of a cleanup. But this approach takes time and saps resources. Last year, a new way emerged. As it turns out, artificial intelligence can be applied to garbage removal. 
In 2020, the Industrial Technology Research Institute used the IDEA AI platform to process information from 121 test sites along 1,210 kilometers of Taiwan's coast. The information was entered into IDEA, which built a model describing marine waste patterns around Taiwan's coast. Using the precision of AI, we can make forecasts about marine waste, projecting when and where it will end up in large amounts. Armed with that information, we can organize a beach cleanup and we will be more effective. Conditions and parameters are entered into the platform, and for any given section of coast, the AI system can predict how much garbage will show up. The analysis is almost instant and is about 80% accurate. We can also use AI to analyze images and assess the amount of waste in the image. We can photograph a section of coastline and the AI will determine how scattered the waste is and classify the level of severity of the waste situation. We can also look at the composition of the waste. Whether it is plastic bottles or metal cans, we can identify that. That is to say, by looking at the composition of the garbage, we can determine its source and determine whether it has drifted there from a neighboring country. Sitting in front of a computer, one can see at a glance which beaches are in need of a cleanup. The system removes the need to send out large crews to survey coasts, but it doesn't fix the main problem, which is that beaches that are cleaned stay clean for up to half a year at most before garbage comes coursing back. For cleanup volunteers, the million dollar question is how to keep the garbage at bay for longer. This group of environmentalists is called Rethink. They've invited actress Sabrina Pai to join them on a beach cleanup, hoping to use her star power to promote their cause. <laughs> 呃，在做很多社群的倡议，但其实同文层就同文层嘛，听得到听得到，听不到永远听不到。We're uh, always engaged in lots of social initiatives, but an echo chamber is an echo chamber. If you hear the message, you hear it. If you don't hear it, then you never will. Huang Ziyang, the founder of Rethink, has been involved in beach cleanups and marine conservation for more than eight years. Bookish and raised in a city, he was inspired years ago to protect nature from man-made waste. After traveling with a foreign friend throughout the country, he realized that the beautiful land of Formosa was littered with waste. There is something I once heard that has always left a deep impression on me. It is that you cannot deceive a person who has been awakened. At the start, there was another person who helped establish Rethink. This person was Daniel Gruber. He was my coworker. We taught English together, and we traveled together to many mountains and beaches. When you've seen the extent of the environmental problems, you have to do something about it. One of Rethink's missions is to raise awareness of serious environmental problems, to bring them closer to people's everyday life. Colorful dishes are arranged on a countertop, but the food on these plates can't be eaten. This is an exhibit organized jointly in 2019 by Rethink and Lanyang Museum in Ilan County. Organizers wanted to highlight the gravity of the marine waste problem and to encourage people to assess the role they play. Rethink decided to take its efforts a step further, using creative means to educate the public. It created an online gallery where users can view photos of marine waste organized into 101 categories. The images are photographed in 3D. Each has a serial number, and users can browse the images based on category, material, frequency of appearance at sea, and source. For example, this early model cell phone was once the height of technology. It's now scuffed and rusted after years adrift at sea. Rethink transformed this waste into art, and in doing so won the Red Dot Design Award and the Golden Pin Design Award. In the past, people thought that cleaning beaches was difficult and tiring work. We made it fun by using the gallery during beach cleanups. 
When people are cleaning the beach, we have them do a treasure hunt. We can identify marine waste, and if someone sees something interesting, we can take that and use it to expand our gallery. One thing that's made an impression on me is people saying that waste is beautiful. That is really thought-provoking. It's like our online gallery, which has been viewed by around 500,000 people. Like marine waste, which on its own wouldn't attract much attention, environmental education can be interesting to youth giving the right design and packaging. Schools have invited Rethink to come speak to classes about the environment. We hope these classes will encourage students to get involved in the community. For example, if they love the ocean, maybe they'll try to reduce their consumption of plastic or get involved with beach cleanups. We don't want to just preach to them. This is very important. Our hope is that these junior high school students, seeing as how they have stronger cognitive abilities at this point, we want to give them more knowledge in hopes that this knowledge can spark action. With most students, when you talk about marine waste, they'll tell you it's something they've heard about before. They've seen it on TV, heard about it from their parents, heard about it from their teachers. So what else can you tell them? So we take a relaxed and humorous approach with students when we talk about marine waste with them. Again and again, volunteers go to the coast and leave with bags loaded with garbage. In the end, the fate of the beaches they leave behind is up to each and every one of us.